Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This week we're working on a super simple character design and some IK rigging. So if you're getting into the IK immediately, so we're setting up some capsules here, both in the arm and the leg position. I'm making sure there's plenty of subdivision so that'll bend nicely when we get to that point. Now we're going to a side view and we're going to add a spline that has three points to it. And we're going to center that, zero it out, get it centered on the capsule itself and align it so it's the same length. See, we'll have a little error here. And then I'm going to add a spline wrap to the capsule and, and drop that spline into the spline wrap so things sort of align. See how we're lining everything up? It's supposed to have an error. Then if you grab the central one, you'll see that we can create sort of a little elbow here. Then onto that spline, we're gonna go into the tags. We're gonna add an IK tag. Make sure that's set to, to two. And if you want more details on this and a really thorough explanation, I, I encourage you to check out uh, EJ Hassenfratz and, and uh, iDesign. He, he goes through this really uh, in depth more so than I'm gonna do here. So you see we're setting another one up for the leg, three points, making sure everything's zeroed out. And we add a spline wrap to the capsule. We drop the spline into the spline wrap, make sure that arrow is pointing down on the spline wrap because that's gonna give us the orientation we need. Give it a little bend for the knee. Drop in that IK, set your points to two and add a goal. You see that everything's moving around nicely. And then what I do is I, you gotta make sure everything's organized and you gotta make sure everything's named properly because I think the IKs will get confused if you don't. And I take the goals outside of the group and then I group the body. And what's cool is you can see that the body will move independently of what's happening with the goals. The goals will stay put. And those go, it, it becomes sort of like a simple puppet here to use. You got the two goals which will represent the movement of the hands and the feet. But placement of the hands and the feet, things will sort of stretch and move kind of naturally. What we're going to do is we're going to use these principles and this, this sort of rig, we'll call it, to do a simple little walk cycle. I know we've done tons of walk cycles in the past on this show using Mixamo, and that's really great. But this is uh, it's going to be done by hand, which is, is kind of nice to do sometimes. It's, it's, I think the simplicity of this walk cycle is going to go well with the simplicity of the character. And as you can see, we're keeping it pretty rudimentary here. Lots of primitives sort of stacked on top of each other to get some basic forms for the body, but overall, a, a really simple character design. And as we get in, we'll, we'll set up some lighting, we'll set up uh, We'll set up some background elements and we'll set up some looping ground elements actually that'll give it a nice uh, a nice feeling as if she's walking along sort of a, a landscape here so modeling some hair using those cloth nerves to add some thickness to that so it's a really nice move I liked what bulging was doing except for that point that I was adding to the top of it so since it's covered by that bun well just remove that. And I, by the way, I'll link to that uh, that eye design tutorial, which will break down all the uh, IK stuff that we fast forwarded through on this episode in, in pretty great detail. So I will put that in the notes below. So you can see we're sort of getting everything into position to start this walk cycle. I wanted to drop the hands down. And now we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do everything in, in 10 frame increments, which is gonna help us kind of remember things. So you can see here we're lifting and moving and keyframing. And you wanna have the, the legs sort of doing the opposite thing from each other. So as one's hitting the ground and dragging down, the other's sort of lifting up and moving forward. And it really it can be really helpful to do everything in, in 10 frame increments. But we are going to keep this to a rather simple walk cycle. I know that a lot of the animation pros out there would probably you know, set up the basics with a 10 frame increment and then sort of push and pull things along the timeline and get some easing in and, and uh, adding a, maybe a little bit more life to it than we did in this few hour exercise. So see there we've got an okay 
move to the to the legs coming along nicely. And what we can also do is, and you'll see we'll do this in a minute, is we'll grab the body and add some keyframes and move that body up and down. But it won't break the walk cycle because the the goals for the legs are outside of the main group and they'll sort of move along with the body. You see that's what we're doing here is we're adding a little bit of up and down movement, which makes it feel a bit more natural. So now you may be noticing here a little bit of an error in the way the knees are bending. And I'm trying to solve that with just uh, some of the settings here in the IK, the IK spline on these legs. Um, and sometimes that'll work just, you know, dialing in that twist and getting the knee oriented the right way. But um, it, it wound up not working for us. In a little bit here, we're going we're gonna to explore a solve for that using what are they called poles. So um, I think I've got it solved here. I'm going to continue with the walk cycle. And we'll go in and, and wind up adjusting that fix a little later. Here I'm adjusting the arms, their position, giving them some counter movement to the way the legs are going. Typically as the left leg moves forward, so does the right arm, and vice versa. I'm going to dial in the texturing here, add some hands. I noticed that after I added this hand that the, the spline wrap was actually backwards, so I reversed that. using materials to add some details to the body here. Getting into lighting a little bit. Adding some surrounding elements, going with a square format. Making our own like fill light with a sky object and a luminant material. I found that the legs were still a bit thin there, so I just kind of thickened them up. And we can see that what we're actually getting in the, in the render window is different from the way the limb is bending um, in the model here. And that's when I get into this actual fix. And what I did originally was I created my own spline and dropped that into the pole vector there's actually the incorrect way to do that. You'll see that that isn't really working for us. What you have to do is hit the create pole or generate pole, the same way you'd hit the create goal object. And what that'll do is create a little, uh, a little spline or a little point that you can use to sort of orient the direction that the IK bends. After fussing around a little bit incorrectly here and trying to use that twist, to solve for it. it wasn't quite working and I got wise and I did it correctly. And that's the one the one little issue I noticed is IKs are great until you start animating and sometimes uh, things will start acting a little wonky here. I've also noticed that if you don't name anything incorrectly and if you've got multiple characters like this cruising around a scene, the IK will get super confused if you're not clear about naming and things will act kind of strange. So. Um, can be a bit of a frustrating part of the, the IK, but getting it solved here. Like I said, I'll, you'll, you'll, you can check out the link below. Um, EJ goes through all this stuff in, in great detail. So we're making some adjustments to the torso here. Messing the character. I think I wind up adding a few more details and then we'll get into creating sort of some background elements. I really like these colors, but I wound up going with a different approach, adding more detail to the background instead of just sort of this flat room look. We're also adding a camera and sort of centering things up. 
making sure our values look okay. Still wasn't loving the effect. Didn't want to go with a completely blank background either. Um, you can see that if you want to add background elements but you want to create movement, then there's some sort of looping concerns you have to factor in anyway. I'll show you sort of the, the, the easy way to deal with that if you've got simple looping background elements. So get our disk dialed in here. Just gonna play with some alpha to give it a soft edge, but wound up not really loving the way that was working either. So, as you know, it's all about adjusting and improving, and uh, you just gotta look and, and adjust. And here we go, we're continuing to get into adding these background elements that I was telling you about. Just got a little capsule. We move that around. We're going to make a, a group of these you know, in an orientation that we kind of like. Add some detail, some sort of rocks to the ground here. And we're, we're going to group those and we're going to move them back and forward a consistent amount. In this case, 600 centimeters. I made several copies of these, I think four or five in total, each of which is spaced 600 centimeters apart from each other. Then what we can do is we just keyframe that and move it forward 600 centimeters. Um, and that, that should all just line up perfectly and loop seamlessly as, as this character is moving along here. I think we went in and added a couple of landscapes to the horizon line here. You see what I'm, before I did that, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding additional bits of interest and in adjusting things. And what you can do is you can adjust placement of things, but if you do, make sure you grab each instance of that object and all of the groups that you've created and move those at the same time consistently so that they'll change location together and can continue to loop. So you're adding some sort of a, a rocky mountainous horizon line. She's off on some wild purple world here. Adjusting, moving things along. These are a bit high poly here, so I think I wind up knocking those down a bit. Taking that. And I didn't want the sky to be the same color as my sky object, so you can see I still have a compositing tag on that with it turned off. I'm just going to add a simple blue sky here, add a few more details. Also, I wind up adding a little moon. And I felt like the character needed a few more details here, so I'm adding some kind of subtle color shifts to the green parts of the outfit. I think it adds a lot. Here we go, getting through the last few test renderings, adjusting a few details on the ground here. Here's that planetary moon kind of deal I was talking about. I also wound up, the, 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 the character's skin and hair in those areas wound up feeling a little bit plasticky, so I added just a bit of subsurface scattering to those, which lighten them up and allows the light to, to kind of penetrate the forms. I, I do this a lot on characters that should have a bit of a, like a softer feel. Um, and it can, add a, it can add a lot to render time, so make sure to sort of turn the, the values down to, you know, halfway or so. You can see all the values are kind of blown out and, and too bright in that first pass. So you have to make sure that you adjust the color of the subsurface scattering to match um, the 
base color in the material. Otherwise, it just adds sort of a white glow to it and really kind of messes up the color scheme. So, all right. And I, one of the benefits of doing these uh, practices in a time lapse format is now I can just get these last few test renderings set, set up and I'll just blow through the remainder of the renderings. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.